Clerk will call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy Charles Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Andy H. Wynn, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invocation today will be delivered by Dr. Willie Weaver from the Worth Baptist Church. Thank you, sir, for coming out today. After the uh, prayer, for <coughs> standing for our pledges. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us and for all of your blessings. We ask that we be wise enough to use them to honor and glorify you. As we pray, we think of those who are affected by the Malaysian situation, the aircraft, those that are bereaved, we ask God that you'd be with them today. As they give up someone they love so much, may it remind them and, and us today how much you loved us when you gave your son to take our place on the cross of Calvary. We pray that you would guide us through the day, that we would make our decisions in light of the word of God and in light of the fact that we are accountable to you. We know you've summarized all of these things in two great commandments, that we love you with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to practice those things in our lives, and we know you'll be pleased with us. We pray now that you would be with Judge Whitley and the commissioners, guide them as they have many important decisions to make, give them the wisdom to make the right ones that would bless our community be beneficial to all. We ask these things, and I ask these things as a Christian, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Dr. Weaver, thank you very much for coming out today. Thank you, especially Dr. Weaver, for being a good neighbor to us at the Resource Connection. Yes, Agenda announcements, Mr. Maynes? Thank you. Court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of March the 18th. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes almost unanimously. Almost. Huh? Unanimously. Uh, we have one proclamation today, and I will read it into the record. Uh, Richard Garnett is here. Richard, you want to come on down and... Uh, this is on Tarrant County Autism Awareness <coughs> Month. Whereas autism spectrum disorders are lifelong developmental disabilities that affect the social communication and behavioral skills of over 2 million individuals in the United States and more than 18,000 in Tarrant County. And whereas autism that causes, the causes of which are not fully understood and which usually appear during the first years of life, is more common in boys than girls and is found throughout the world in families of all ethnic and social backgrounds. And whereas autism can cause speech and language to be absent or delayed and affect cognitive abilities, causing the person with autism to relate abnormally to people, objects, and events, as well as cause great stress to entire families, and whereas individuals with autism can require a lifetime of specialized and community support services to ensure their health and safety. And it is necessary to support families' resilience as they manage the philosophic, psychological, and financial burdens autism presents. And whereas the Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities Needs Council of Tarrant County is hosting Understanding Autism training sessions on April 2nd, 
2014 and April 3rd, 2014, for families, educators, social workers, and first responders to help recognize, communicate, and better assist individuals with autism. And whereas Tarrant County acknowledges early diagnosis, training, education, and therapies can lead to improved lives as well as the need to better understand and increase community awareness of autism spectrum disorders. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do proclaim the month of April 2014 as Autism Awareness Month in Tarrant County. And further, we encourage Tarrant County residents to become better educated about autism spectrum disorders and support efforts to enable people with autism to have productive, full lives. In witness whereof, we've hereunto set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 25th day of March, 2014. I'll move its approval. Second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I just want to echo what Dr. Dyer has said and also thank the Pitney and the court for your support. Um, you have been instrumental from the very beginning in supporting all the years that the years that we've had. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Court members, you have before you the consent agenda. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Mayes. Members of the Court, we have two items uh, for your action this morning. The first one concerns the, re the reappointment of Randy Renoir as the Tarrant County Fire Marshal, effective April 14, 2014. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. <coughs> discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. The Water District has already gotten with Randy to make sure that he begins to put burn bans on because we need a, quite a bit of rain yet. So every time we put a burn ban on, it normally rains, so we'll probably be bringing burn bans to you very quickly. So. <laughs> Members of the court, on item number two, I'm going to ask Ms. McMillan to uh, address the court at this time. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Similar to an item we had on the agenda last week, we have um, for your consideration um, approval of a letter of concurrence to the Foreign Trade Zones Board allowing for expansion of Foreign Trade Zone uh, 168 Site 5, which is the Mercantile Center Business Park. Um, the Mercantile Center Business Park encompasses about 1,300 acres at the southeast corner of I-35 and uh, North Loop 820. The foreign trade zone boundary was originally um, in set to encompass about 630 acres in the Mercantile Center, but over the years, that original land has um, been developed and additional properties have been acquired. 
the mercantile partners would now like to um, add the additional 590 acres of the balance of the development into the foreign trade zone that they currently have. You can see the um, yellow, everything inside the yellow boundary is the existing FTZ, and they want to expand with um, everything within the red boundary. Um, the shaded portion on the right side is Haltom City, so a section of that goes into Haltom City, and the rest is the city of Fort Worth. Um, currently, as you can see, there's a lot of vacant land, but there are some that, um, sites that are already developed. There are approximately 37 tenants that are located on part of the acreage that's to be added. But the City of Fort Worth, when the um, request came forward, did an extensive review of those sites and the tenants that are um, located on those sites and found that none of those are people that would be really utilizing the uh, foreign trade zone in their business. So at this point, nothing would come off the tax rolls. In the future, um, if new uh, tenants locate to that site who do business in the global marketplace, they may be um, looking at activation of the forward trade zone status, but we don't anticipate any loss of revenue currently with the expansion of these boundaries. Uh, of course, as we mentioned last week, um, the foreign trade zone exemption only um, is on inventory. It has nothing to do with real or personal property such as machinery and equipment. That is still fully taxable. The uh, well, city Lisa, of... At least on that, if we do have new businesses moving in there and they do construct uh, then we would actually see tax revenue off of the new construction. Correct. Project, correct. Okay. From the real property and, and, and the machinery and equipment they put in there at the location. The City of Fort Worth, Haltom City, and the Burville ISD have already approved a similar letter of occurrence, and we're asking the Commissioner's Court to um, approve the letter that's in um, your packet that shows the boundaries attached. Terry Parent, who is the um, coordinator of the Mercantile uh, foreign trade zone is here if you have any questions I have a question for you the inventory is ultimately taxed right right now the inventory in some of the company and I don't really know but right now some of which you know, particulars on the companies but the inventory is taxed but some of the companies that have that inventory shipped um, outside of Texas within 175 days are already receiving a free port exemption. Now, what happens is that with the foreign trade zone, it goes beyond that. So if they have 50% of their inventory receiving free port, it would take in the balance of that most of the time. So a lot of them are already receiving some exemption. It just adds to that exemption. But as I said, when the city of Fort Worth <coughs> looked at the properties that were already located, they were not the type of properties that were really going to be utilizing the foreign trade zone. I'll move approval of the letter of uh, concurrence. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Tidwell? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have one item we're asking the court to consider this morning. That's to receive and file the Tarrant County financial statements for the period ended February of 2014. Move to receive and file. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion Thank passes you. unanimously. Elections. Come on down. Good to see you, sir. Morning. 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 We're here today to ask the court to uh, approve the uh, 40 permanent branch early voting sites and the eight temporary early voting sites for the May 27th primary runoff election. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank Question. you. Question. Yes, sir. Did we finally get our workers paid from the general, from the primary election? The 2012 or? The one we just held. The, oh, yes, sir. The checks went out last Monday. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Glenn. I move to receive and file the personnel agenda. Second. A motion to second to receive and file personnel agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Good morning and thank you. Uh, we have one additional item for the court. Item number two, we're asking the court to approve a waiver of terminal benefits for Precinct 3. <coughs> Sammy Teal, the Assistant Director of Field Operations, retired at the end of February with 400 vacation hours. The Commissioner is requesting a waiver of 248 of the 400 vacation hours. We're estimating net savings 
to be approximately $2,500 to the Road and Bridge Fund. Move for approval. Second. Our motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beecham. <coughs> yeah, I know. We lost last night. How about those points? Where's your Razorbacks? We were, we were in it until TV. early this morning. We were alive until early this morning, about 12.35. So. But we have three items for your consideration yes. this morning. Yes, sir. Uh, first item is a bid award recommendation for bid 2014-073. This is a bid for the sale of recycled paper. Recommendation will be toward the high bidder, Evergreen Paper, uh, purchasing from the county, uh, sorted ledger at $240 a ton, office paper at $150 a ton. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is a bid award recommendation for bid number 2014-047. This is an annual contract for the purchase of sedans countywide. Recommendation should be to order a pre enterprise basis, ordering to the ten primary vendors as shown in your court communicate. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our last item is an item uh, in regards to RFP 2011-068 uh, for inmate calling services. We're requesting that we hold this until after closed uh, for your consideration. Move approval. Uh, we're just going to hold it till after close. Yes, sir. So we don't want to. We probably don't want. I mean. I know you were just saying move approval to hold it till after close, but I'll, let's just hold it till after close. We were just sitting here, so I'll just get it moving. <laughs> well, that's because he hadn't left. <laughs> Thank you. Get out of here. <laughs> Come on down, Mr. Skinner. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. We are requesting your approval of an amendment, uh, number one, to an interlocal agreement with the City of Kennedale related to improvements to High Ridge Road and Link Street. Precinct uh, 2 desires to use discretionary bond funds for this project. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Wynn, I believe, Commissioner Wynn, I believe you have an interlocal agreement. Yes, sir, Your Honor. I move for approval of item 8L. 1A and B. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Are there any appointments today? I have an appointment to the uh, Tarrant County Historical Commission. Uh, Mr. Leon Hogg uh, from the city of Euless. I'd like to move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I noticed that in our audience we have former Dallas County Commissioner Ken Mayfield. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Ken. Ken. Um, you have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion to second to approve the claims, including the addendum. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, any other announcements? Your Honor, just one note. Beginning next week, uh, April 1st, we're going to begin our uh, public health updates. We want to start by briefing you all on the West Nile virus issues. Commissioner Johnson can hardly wait. He's been just, he's just been antsy waiting for those things to start. Yeah. He's, he's requested a whole bunch of different contracts be on the agenda for next week also. No, the pints are not coming over. At this time, we will recess our open meeting and proceed to close the discussion. Peter Torvik is no longer with <coughs> Peter Torvik is no longer with NACO Financial Services. Really? Swarnam has come back for the interim. Wow. <coughs> in return from our closed session, we will now address the following matter. Purchasing.
Your Honor, other, other members of court, we have one I'm uh, now after close to uh, bring to you for your consideration. It's in regards to RFP number 211068 for inmate calling services. We're asking the court to approve the contract amendment. Move, move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have this time, Your Honor. Being no further business, we are adjourned.